Hello everyone, Master Xeon 1001 here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a particular type of pulsing insert based off of a support question I was looking at online. So basically this is a scripted expression insert similar to the previous ones that just shows how you can create a pulsing light. And here I am showing it in 2.8. So without further ado, let's get in here and begin. So starting off in Blender, I'm going to press GZ minus one to place the cube below the grid floor, SZ 20, just to scale up the cube to make an endless floor. From here, I'm going to insert a circle. And after converting it uh, to a mesh, after applying a level of subdivision, I now have more points to deal with here. So in this video, you should also be able to see my keystrokes as well, but I am doing this um, post post recording instead of at the same time due to some issues with recording. Uh, when it comes to straightening things out, I use reset axis, which in object mode, it resets objects, but in edit mode, it resets geometry. So if you ever want to just straighten something out, instead of pressing S X zero or something, you can use that. Here we are using the Alt X mirroring mode. Of course, for this, you want to apply the rotation beforehand. Now we'll go in here and put in the uh, scripted expression. So for this one, instead of using pound frame times 0 0.15, we're going to use something a little bit more complicated. Now, personally, I'm no math expert, but it is shown here on screen, so you can try it for yourself. You'll know you put it in correct because it will turn purple. So after typing this in and pressing enter, we now see that we have a gradual rotation going between negative 57 and negative positive, yeah, between negative 57 and positive 57. And this will play a, a major role. Um, lately, I've been playing with drivers and inserts quite a bit, especially because 2.8 has that new dependency graph, so I want to take advantage of it. So right now, I'm just kind of getting my feet wet and just playing with them big time with inserts because I see a, um, a really automated future for mechanical rigging coming up. And this is just the, um, the preliminary understanding right here. You know, I like to do things manually for a bit and then uh, from there figure out ways to uh, make that system a little bit more user friendly. So from here, we're just making a simple bottom here, nothing fancy here. We're gonna to have to flip the normals. And now we just have this piece in there. The piece that's selected isn't being rotated, just a piece on the outside. We'll put a little trench in there that way. When the light hits it, it'll have something to show. From here, I'm gonna insert a cube and show you an interesting feature called SphereCast. This feature was actually added into a hard ops by myself. No one uses it for that reason. So, I do have plans on enhancing this in the future. However, right now I intended it to be used for making character eyes. Usually I don't make their eyes using UV spheres. So making them from cubes is just much better in my opinion. I think you can also insert them, but this is our solution for it. So from here, I'm gonna insert a driver manually. So that way I can go ahead and modify it from this panel. So we'll go ahead and change this to a graph editor, go over to drivers, focus on the curve using home. We'll expand the drop down till we find our driver, click on it, press N to bring up the end panel. Before we even get started, I wanna go ahead and just put the modifiers. From doing this over and over, I know that these modifiers just are important. We'll need this one in order to control the uh, exponent, so that way at negative 57, we can make it jump up to higher intensities of light. And we'll need a limit because we don't want lights to have negative emission. It looks really bad. Um, in my studies of messing with it, I found that negative emission lights just look really crazy. And if you forget about them, it looks even crazier. So we'll eye drop our tool here, change this over to local space because in my heart, I know I need it to be local space, but um, Blender continues to play with my mind because you'll see that occasionally I'll change it to the right setting, but I'll change it from that setting to the wrong setting to get it to work visually. And then 
later on I'll find myself needing to change it to the right setting for it to work in the end. So it's uh, kind of confusing. So it's definitely something uh, I, I recommend experimenting with. In fact, you know, instead of speeding up this part or anything, you know, I'm just wanting you to see how I'm going through and messing with this. I tried to delete it, I undid it. Um, like I said, it continues to just play with my mind, but I'm getting a better grasp on it. But these are just some of the limitations, you know, that's what happens when you start trying to make a insert based off of someone's problem being reported to the tracker. And they said, that'll be fixed in the future. But here we go. We now have an insert that without any keyframes will just pulse. And so these experiments, uh, you know, I hope you the viewer are enjoying them. Uh, if so, I do plan to make quite a few on just spotlighting these inserts just to kind of show you some of the things I've been experimenting with with modeling. But I think scripted expressions can have a serious place in hard surface modeling. So it's just terribly underutilized and just like bull tool brought um bullions to the uh, masses in a uh, digestible manner i think we can do something with drivers in the same fashion so right now i'm just making the cut cylinder because everything needs to uh, be inserted and so there's always this uh bb the one of the cool things about using kitops pro is um or just kitops in general um, is that you can create inserts in any way that you want versus uh, if you hack your way in hard ops, it's kind of a little bit more work. In fact, every time I have to add them, it's like a pain in the neck. So even though I still plan on expanding on those in the future, I do plan to go in a uh, slightly different way as far as making inserts that are more um, useful to the user instead of um, what they are now. I mean, we'll probably never get rid of the ones we have, but I do plan to uh, make some that are more focused on specific purposes like for example the insert grid floor uh, i want that one to possibly be an insert that combos with uh, the ability to set up the scene at the same time along with render settings so you basically insert this insert and you get a generous amount of samples and whatnot but you know these are ideas that probably are just best saved for 2.8 at this point so right here we just create another little notch and we'll use the classic command uh, pound frame times 0 0.15, I believe, in order to just get that to rotate constantly. So we have one dial rotating constantly. We have the other one pivoting back and forth. Uh, in my initial examples, I used an empty and just had everything rotating constantly, but I do like the look of it pivoting around. So from here, we can just control C and copy this out of the scene. But before that, I do want to parent it to the empty and make sure that even in a rotated state, we still get the effect. It's important to test your insert similar to what you see going on here where you want it to work in any rotational state. Sometimes if you're using world transformations uh, or your settings aren't set correctly on your constraints, it'll um, happen to you. It happens to me a lot. In fact, every time you see me refining the insert in the thumbnail scene, that's a sign that I might have done something wrong on the other side, but continuing on, let's go ahead and render a thumbnail of this. But instead of looking at it like that, I actually pressed F12 because I'm classic. Uh, instead, I wanted to click render thumbnail and let it do it behind the scenes. And what's important is that you never save it at the point that you're making the thumbnail. The thumbnail is just a photo shoot. After that, you revert back to the initial thumbnail that doesn't have that scene. So another thing I forgot to do was actually check the animated box. So this would come in an animated state, which would have everything looking a little bit more actiony. That was uh, one of the suggestions that I had for Kid Ops. And we have it played back and we see that nothing is happening. Nothing's happening. So it's time to troubleshoot. What has gone wrong here? I'll tell you, local transformations. It'll get you every time. In fact, looking at this video in retrospect, there might not have even been a need for me to go back into the drivers, but there probably is. And it's right there. If you don't change that to local space, you will regret it. 
when you put that in any other orientation than the one that's right there in the world. I mean, the name kind of tells you, you know. So if you're watching this and you're not even using KitOps, you're watching this to learn about inserts and or just modeling and expressions, give this a try. Just make some parts because, I mean, all that KitOps is doing in this case is just turning that into a process I can repeat later and plan around and duplicate and all that stuff. But I mean, on the base level, we're just playing with expressions and basic modeling here. And I want to take all these tricks and more into 2.8 and make something really amazing very quickly, very automated. I mean, EV renders in real time. We should model in real time, you know, just even faster than this. You know, it's time to take off my weighted boots like um, Rock Lee. So I'm using the search in this in this context to uh, find them in the list. The search is a little known feature. Just click the little plus on the list. You can just search for inserts. Right now I'm still working on this pack that I'm putting together. So if this is something that you're interested in, definitely uh, stay tuned. It'll be coming out soon. One of the you know first K-Packs for Kid Ops will be a bunch of animated inserts and camera lenses and just, just crazy little tricks like this. I also want to throw out there uh, to you, the viewers, that limited edition hard op shirts are out now with hats coming very, very soon. Uh, right now, there's only like 24 shirts. If you're small, medium, not large or extra large, because I took all those. Just kidding. It, if you want to get a shirt, get it quickly. They're very nice. Just take a look at them. I might even splash them on the screen when I edit this. So now we're over in 2.8 just dropping our inserts in here and really there's not a lot to do here I mean I go to look dev and I decide I, you know actually I want to go over to render and we just play it back and it does what it's supposed to do I mean that is the result that we need of course I'll need to insert a sun just a little bit of shading maybe lower the energy sun's really bright today and let's turn on the ambient occlusion and the bloom Probably should turn on local reflections. But that's a done deal. This insert is ours forever. We'll be inserting it all over the place, just creating pulsing lights. And I've been experimenting with this in a variety of ways. So uh, I do plan to do a few more insert spotlight videos, just highlighting various inserts and how I create them in hopes of uh, inspiring you to use and creating your own additional inserts. It also doesn't help that I'm powered by the Threadripper 2, which offers immense power for all my experiments now. Sometimes I take it for granted that I just don't see hourglasses that much anymore. I have to just get away from the computer sometimes because it'll just let me keep going. But there is no, no waiting, or at least less waiting than before. But with that, we'll go ahead and wrap this video. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this behind the insert. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Comments down below. Also, go get your hard up shirt. There's so few left. See you guys next time.